doing? You see me trying to get off, bro? Yo, welcome to the untimely Christmas special. Gotta keep that untimely branding going somehow. This movie was recommended to me by a close friend, and you'd think that we'd stop being close friends based on that, but hey, I'll give her one more chance. Ooh, I, I mean, how bad could this movie actually be? It even got a re-release in 2017 for some unknown reason. So, let's just get right into the story. Major spoilers for the only time that I wasn't excited for a snow day. We start off with the classic Nickelodeon intro that is only slightly related to the movie we're about to see, and if you couldn't tell, this movie looks like it went through a blizzard, which means if you don't wear glasses, you get to experience what it's like to have poor vision. In other words, this movie looks like garbage. The movie actually starts with some narration about snow for the people who don't know what that is over a Jimmy Neutron themed background. Once that's done, we see Chevy Chase as a weatherman speaking Hawaiian for a bit, and we hear about a lawsuit that's far more interesting than what this movie is about. We'll be right back with the story of a Syracuse man who sued himself and won. Now that is a story worth telling. And we find out that the weatherman's name is Tom. Went to school for meteorology when I could just look outside. A sucker! And we see that his main competition is a dude named Chad, so no wonder Tom needs gimmicks to get his weather across. There's a little more narration and we see this guy, Ken Weaver. This side character has more screen time than some main characters. It's a shame. And Weaver gets hit with a snowball that these kids have been holding onto for months, like weirdos. And we see the narrator's sister, Natalie. A criminal, but it's funny because she's a kid. And this movie would have been much better if she was just the main character. We don't know these two kids' names yet, but it's always nice to see Chunky Josh, so it's fine for now. When we finally see the narrator, we find out that this kid should honestly be on a watch list because he says this. Let's just say I know the exact number of times she blinks per minute. Man, what the fuck? Little bro can't be this down bad in high school. I refuse to believe that this isn't something that the writers took from their own lives because it's way too specific. Which one of y'all was peeping eyelids in the back of the classroom in the 70s? I'd say I'd keep my eyes on y'all, but y'all would probably like it, you freaks. Anyway, we find out that the horny little eyelid kid's name is Hal Branson. Insert generic white boy here, and needs to keep his hands outside his pants. And even though he's a weirdo, because he's our main character, fate smiles on him and he gets a chance to talk to his crush, Claire. She can definitely do better. When we pick back up with Natalie, who doesn't go to school for some reason, she's playing with some action figures when Hal says, actually, they're collectibles, not toys. But without me even joking him, his sister does a pretty good job, so that's fine. At dinner, we see that Tom is Natalie and Hal's dad, and that they have a little brother named Randall, and because of this one interaction, he's the best character that we've seen so far. Randall. A menace to society. I had a job at Panera Bread. I took that work to work. After dinner, I can't control my horny level. And sniffs Claire's anklet and wears it. And while I'm not gonna slander that Hal likes feet, however, I will say that I don't like this and I wish I never saw it. But before Hal can really get the quality time he so desperately craves for, Natalie walks in and saves us from having to deal with that whole situation. Tom and Natalie have a little father-daughter time, Hal and his buds hang out at the local diner like every teenager from a small town does. At least, that's what these movies keep trying to tell me. Hal then says this, I can't go up with a leg jiggler. And it's only been 13 minutes and I've already gotten three quotes from this movie and they're all for bad reasons. Hal then chickens out from asking out Claire. Natalie does like a seance or something for some snow to fall, but we see she's just daydreaming or night dreaming, whatever, it doesn't matter, because her mom, whose name we still don't know, comes to tuck her in. The next day, Natalie gets her precious snow and a lot of it, and because of it, we get what we came here for, a snow day. But it's not all fun and games because we get introduced to the Snowplow Man and his bird, Trudy. A man who's a little too enthusiastic about his job and a bird that just wants to have some fun. Randall's just being the best again, and Hal goes to give Claire her anklet back. Hal's friend, Lane, is insanely flirty with Hal, so I'm glad we get to add that cliche to the pile too. Also, I'm not giving Lane a card. She's just not, she's just not that interesting, honestly. 
Somehow, Natalie's friends have made an igloo already with running electricity like three hours into the snow day. And when the snowplow man comes down the road, Natalie beans him with a snow nut. I've got the jelly filled snow nut. That's cute. Because this movie wants to be so childish and getting hit with it causes him to smash into a car. Then he actively tries to kill these kids. I mean, it seemed like he was trying to do that before, but now this is a real problem. Back with the mom who has a name now, Laura. She could also do better. I mean, let me know, Laura. <laughs> anyway, she's on a 2000 Zoom call while Randall bangs his head against the wall. Just the greatest. Back with Hal, when he gets to Claire's house, he sees that damn near the whole neighborhood is outside her window simping, and this dude Chuck actually calls them simps? Beat it, simps. Beat it, simps. I mean, Kinda. The subtitles say dips, but come on, man, this movie was ahead of its time. That's pretty good. Good for them. I didn't forget about the whole weird eyelid thing, though, so, you know, take what you can. Hal then gets a much worse idea to try and proclaim his love for Claire on air at his dad's news station instead of just going up to her door and saying, hey, you drop this and just go from there. Somehow, he finds his dad on location, doesn't check on him after he bails super hard on a sled, and gets on the news and instead of the guy in the studio, I don't know, turning the feed off, Hal gets to say his creepy piece and Claire looks like she digged it. Homeboy's gonna like, get it. So, I guess the moral of the story is, stalk women until you know enough about them and then get on a TV broadcast pretty much saying that and then you get the girl? Huh? I'm not testing that one, but y'all can get back to me on that. You know, for science. I would like to see it. When Claire drives by on her ex-boyfriend slash current boyfriend snowmobile, I guess, Claire and Hal lock eyes and she smiles, but like, she's on his snowmobile, so either she sucks or... No, no, wait, there is no or. Claire kinda sucks. Back with the snowplow man, Natalie and her friends have Josh play dead in the road as a decoy, and even though not even 20 minutes ago this dude was definitely trying to run them over, he gets out and checks on them. While that's going on, Natalie steals Trudy, so the supposedly grown man known as the snowplow man kidnaps Josh. On Hal's side, he's making grandiose gestures again, but Claire's still feeling them, so I guess it's all right. The snowplow man then goes to Natalie's house, which means Josh probably snitched. Whack. And instead of telling Laura, hey, your daughter stole my bird, tell her to give it back. He lies, and then when Laura chases after Randy, this man picks up their phone where Natalie sets up a meeting to trade the POWs. Prisoners of winter. Ah. <laughs> It's so stupid. Lane overshares before getting Claire to come with her to meet Hal, even though they could have met at the ice rink, but whatever. Snowplow Man gets his bird back, and Natalie gets her Josh back. At Hal's monument to Claire, both the audience and Hal learn an important lesson. Don't assume something about someone without asking first, because you'll probably end up looking fucking stupid. We get another chase scene in this movie for no reason. Tom fights a kid on TV, and we waste like two minutes watching Laura and Randall play in the snow. And this movie takes a really weird turn when Meltar, one of those action figures from earlier, starts talking to Natalie to give her a pep talk, and Lane and Hal kiss, because of course they do. Tom exposes Chad as a phony, and Hal gets to kiss Claire, which is just... I'm not gonna say I'm jealous, but like, come on, this dude? But it doesn't matter because it doesn't have that same spark as when he kissed Lane. Oh. At least Claire is understanding of the whole situation, so that's good, I guess. Natalie has her last stand with the snowplow man, but this time she gets the whole neighborhood on her side and these kids beat the shit out of him and his snowplow. So, yay, I guess. Listen, some more random stuff happens, the kids get a second snow day, and the movie ends with Lane and Hal getting together. Yay, happy ending, yay! Okay, now that the story is out of the way, what did I think? I feel like you could tell by the end of what I was just saying. That shit was ass! <laughs> so the movie wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it still isn't good. For a movie about a snow day, there sure was a lot going on, and a lot of it absolutely did not matter. But let's start with the positives first. I really like how the movie makes the kids feel like kids. What I mean is, is that the movie really does make an effort to show the world through the eyes of the kids. 
I think that the world looks stupid, but kids will make up stories about the world because their imaginations help them understand it, and this movie does a decent job of doing that. On the acting side, my guy Randall, played by Connor Mathis, or Mathias? I don't know, is by far the highlight of the movie, mainly because not too many other characters are really all that interesting to see. Chevy Chase, who played Tom, was boring, and since I do know very little of him aside from him being a comedian, I thought he'd be funnier. And yeah, that's the script's fault too, but he could have put some more oomph <clears throat> in his performance for me. Jean Smart, aside from being a baddie, had some funny moments and her playing in the snow with Randall was cute, but it really doesn't add anything outside of that. When it comes to Hal, played by Mark Webber, he's pretty good. His character sucks and is dumb in the most obviously annoying ways, but Mark plays a dumb teenage boy pretty well, so it's alright. Xena Grey, who played Natalie, is my second favorite character because there's actually a lot in her character. She's a dumb kid, but she just wants to play with her older brother, and she struggles with having to watch him grow up more and not have time for her. It's not really that deep in the movie, but I'm grasping at straws at this point, so it'll do. Every other character is fine. Pam Greer, legendary black exploitation actress, is in this and does nothing. Chris Elliott of Osmosis Jones fame is cool as a crazy guy who should be fired, but we know nothing about him aside from the fact that he loves his butt. So like, okay. I don't know why I expected substance from this movie, especially when the first thing I saw when I Googled it was that it was at a crispy 29 on Rotten Tomatoes. And that's not the best indicator since BVS is at a 28 and that movie is way worse than this. But I'll have to talk about that movie eventually. With Snow Day, you kind of know what you're getting. It's one of those movies that played in the background early in the morning that you would have watched during breakfast, and then by lunch, you would have forgotten about it. Which is kind of weird considering that there's so much going on in this movie that at least something should stick out. There's the mom storyline where she's trying to get her business deal to go down, which never goes down. Yeah, you could say that she put her kids first, but like, she didn't have to make a choice like that. All she had to do was plop that boy Randy in a car seat, lock him in, and be on the call for like 15 minutes max. I did not care at all about Tom and his rivalry with Chad, especially when it just ended like- So he's better than you? Yes. And stacks more paper and gets more holes than you, nigga? Absolutely. Then the principal getting hit with snowballs was just annoying because bro could have just stayed in the house. All he had to do was stay your ass home, shit! And yeah, the movie is really only an hour and 24 minutes long, but a lot of that time is spent doing unnecessary shit anyway, so who cares? Even with the major parts of the movie, characters are just dumb or do dumb things anyway, so why would you care? Matter of fact, let me just play this scene for you so you can better understand how stupid this movie is. Huh? Man, what the fuck is this? Yeah, this is a kids movie, and kids movies are silly, especially when they're Nick, 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 Three years before this, and will eventually be reviewed in the future, was made by the same production studio, and was even sillier, honestly, but at least it was like, funny, haha, look at him, not, did this man really just eat some fries off this child's body that he thought was probably like, dead? And then there's just little things about this movie that are annoying, like what fucking soup is clear? They could have just opened some Campbell's, but nope we get to see some water. Then Laura tells Natalie that it's a school day tomorrow, but why wasn't she at school that day? Did she ditch to go throw some old ass snowballs at her principal? What is going on? What is the timeline? But again, this movie isn't like the worst thing I've ever seen, and it's not even so bad that it's entirely worth seeing. If you're nostalgic for turn of the century kids movies that aren't top tier, you know, the Disney Channel originals that would come up, DCOMs if you will, then I'd say this is pretty similar. I mean, the story of this movie is so generic that Disney literally put out the same movie the same year, so maybe I'll check that out before winter's over. I won't, that's a lie.
This took longer than it was supposed to for some reason. But what did you think? Was the review as fresh as the first winter dusting? Or are you happy that it's over like school during winter break? See, I put that joke in here. Winter break is technically over for a lot of people. Let me know more in the comment section below. Mayhaps like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.